All right, we are back. We are back. I hope you guys had a good lunch break. Did you guys have a good lunch break? Was it good? Very cool, very cool. All right, what's the library? All right. <laughs> Brian was asking, what's a library? Brian, surely enough, you know what a library is. All right. So we've, we have a really incredible speaker that's coming up within the next couple of minutes. I want to make sure that I give her enough time to get ready. I want to make sure that everyone else is back here. Let's look at the numbers. Still eating my lunch, actually, says Kelly. Lunch was yummy. Yeah, we had some really cool stuff too here. I had some brown rice and I had um, kind of like uh, chicken with uh, vegetables, sauteed vegetables. So it was really great, really good. Rob had a salad. What'd you guys have for, for uh, lunch? Someone else says they're still eating their lunch. Cold pizza, says Jennifer. Still, uh, what else? Tuna sandwich, that's not good. That's not bad. Turkey pita, oh, that sounds good too. Jersey Mike's, oh, I love it. Still waiting for mine. Chicken sandwich and tea. Break, breakfast casserole, there you go. Bacon, egg, and cream cheese. Caesar dressing, nice. Oatmeal, there you go. That's one of my favorites too, oatmeal. Zucchini, pinto beans. My mom used to love pinto beans. So much so that as a kid, she used to make us eat pinto beans like because she loved them for like every meal. And I said, when I turn 18, I'm never eating another pinto bean in my life. And there you go. Pinto beans and lima beans. Coffee and sticky bun. Premier protein. Was that the drink? The premier protein drink, uh, Helene? Reheated homemade pizza. All right. Fresh top says Thai. Yeah, I actually... Got a fresh cut here. Brown rice and veggie sounds good. Love rice, says Linda. Yeah, absolutely. All right, cool. So we're going to jump into this thing. And let me just look at the timing here. I want to make sure that our guest has enough time to come in. And what we're going to do one last time, I do want to remind you that you, this is your last time actually to schedule a coaching call. So if you have not done so, the room, the chance to do so, is going to come down to an end um, at the top of the hour. So your last chance to go in and book your coaching call if you have not done so. I don't want you guys to miss out. So again, to book your coaching call, let me just open up the chat box here. So Abigail on tech, can you throw in the coaching call link once again? All right. So there you go. Throw in that link. For those of you who have not booked your coaching call, the tech team is going to share the link so you can go in and book one. Again, this is your last time. I know we have people that are just coming back from lunch, still coming back. All right. Book your call now. You go over to kindlecashflow.com forward slash seminar. All right. Someone says, oh, so here, Cindy says, I booked mine with Rodney a few minutes ago. All right. I don't know where to go. Cindy, after you book your call, once it's time. At the time that you have scheduled your call, you're going to come down here to the green button. All right? The green button. Do you have that, Cindy? Okay. So now for those of you who have not booked the call, for those of you that are just coming back, you're welcome, Cindy, from lunch. You, the link is in the chat box. I see Fortune just put it in there. Cool just, just put it in there. I love that. The folks that are actually helping to put this link in there. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's what we that's what we do here, right? That's what we do. We help one another when we see a question that's being asked. And if we can help one another in answering that question, then why not? Right? It helps. I think you you're helping someone else also helps you to grow too. All right, helps you. All right. So book. This is Valerie. All right. So here, last time to book your coaching call takes place at the top of the hour for today, okay? So go over to kindlecashflow.com forward slash seminar, click the red, click to book a coaching session button that you'll see here, all right? And then, actually, I'm going to jump out and I'm going to show you guys, and then we're going to bring on our special guest, and she is going to show you some really cool stuff. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to go over to kindlecashflow.com, and yes, my screen is paused. All right. You'll see it here. You'll see the videos of Nate and Seth and even uh, the 19 year old Peter Andre, who's killing it. He's 20 now. He just had a birthday Friday, last Friday, but he's killing it at $32,000 a month. You'll see the proof of him doing that here on this page. 
So when you go over to kindlecastro.com forward slash seminar to book your call, and remember, this is your last chance. It ends at the top of the hour. So just 34 more minutes is what you have. So you can go in, you'll click this red button to book your call. After you book that call, you're going to post that you've booked your call. So here, this is what that's going to look like. You come here, you click that button. Then you'll click the other red button. You'll see a countdown because we still have a lot of people that are trying to book calls here. All right. And then at the end, your coaching session is ready to be booked. You'll hear that. So at the end of a countdown, then you can go in, you'll click this link to book your session. All right. You're going to choose your time zone here. So be careful here. Make sure that it has your time zone. If it doesn't go in and select it, it should have your time zone by default. Then you're going to go in and just find more times, right? So if it says no times are available, right? Just see if you can find more times. Actually, you know what? We've got to get more times here. There's a lot of people that are booking times. So Abigail, if you can reach out to Justin, let them know that we need more times posted up here, right? We've got a lot of action takers here, so we need more time on the calendar, All right? So that's what you're going to do once you book your time there, then... You come back into the chat box. You're going to put the time that your call is booked for, right? And then set a uh, reminder on your phone three minutes before your time. And then once your, 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 your call time is, comes up, right? And it's time for you to go in and talk to your coach. You come back here. You click the green button to access the coaching zone. And that's going to put you in another room so that you can talk to your coach. All right? So pretty straightforward, right? All right. And then to get back to where we're at right here, you just come back to kindlecastro.com forward slash seminar and you click the blue button to access the event room, okay? And that's the passcode if it asks you for one, KCF family. So that's it. So now with that said, I want to go in and I want to bring over my guest here. Let me let me see if uh, if the one and only Tiffany Loggy. Abigail Tech, can you guys bring in Tiffany? Yeah, Tiffany's here. I've been asking her to unmute and show her camera, but nothing from okay. her yet. Okay. All right, let me reach out to her. Hi, how you doing? There we go. We got, I, I hear her. Boom, Tiffany. We've it got you. Ray. All right. So listen, this is a good friend of mine. This is Tiffany Largy. Listen, when I talked about having accountability partners earlier, I talked about having people that are in your space, right? And luckily we have people in our community that you can do this with. Tiffany challenges me, all right? I challenge Tiffany. We go back and forth. We set goals. We work on those goals. We make sure that we're accountable. I share books that I'm reading with her. She shares books that she's reading with me. We talk about programs that we're, you know, that we're, 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 we're part of. We talk about the next level in life as it relates to business, family, everything. And Tiffany's got some really cool things that I think, you know, everyone that's on this event right now can get some value out of. So, Tiffany, I'm going to take it over and uh, pass it to you. Listen, I have I am so excited to be here at Kindle Cash for Live. And more importantly, let me just tell you, you guys are so fortunate. I wish to God. um uh, that I had a Ty Cohen in my life as, as a mentor, as a friend, as just someone I had access to early in my journey. As I listened to him early on in the session before, I was like, man, not only is this man brilliant, but the truth of the matter is, is that success leaves clues. And a couple of things that he said this morning, I literally went, whoa. So really quickly, if you have had like an amazing morning, you're like, you're kind of mind blown on how awesome Ty is. Can you do me a favor? Just so that I know you're here and you're present and you can, you please put Ty in the chat and put exclamation points after it because Ty did that. Yes, yes, and more yes. Yes, yes, and more yes. Yes, yes, and more yes. Yes, what's going on? So really quickly, before I get started, give me an idea for, yes, Robert, right? Alexandra, Nikki, yes, Chief, Gary, Catherine, I know, right? Wasn't he amazing? Jeanette, Pearl, Robert, Ashley, Rob is in the house. Anita, what's going on? You know, I, I got to tell you a couple of things that I wrote down. So if you were taking notes this morning, I'm going to get right into it, but I want to start here. Because not only is everything that Ty said 100% true, 
But the truth of the matter is that, you know, for me, at the end of the day, you're either doing the damn thing or you're not. You either made a decision this morning to say, you know what, I'm going to be present in this amazing event. I'm going to take notes. But the truth of the matter is that if you just take notes and you don't, you don't eat them afterwards, you don't apply them, you don't take action, then, you know, the truth of the matter is that we're only as good as yesterday. We're only as good as yesterday, but we have the opportunity to design tomorrow. Every note that you took today from Ty, every single note that you took from Ty is your opportunity and a decision that you get to make to design tomorrow. Uh, really quickly in the chat, I want you to put uh, for me, uh, I design my tomorrows. Every single time I, I hear Ty speak, and granted, not only do I have the luxury of hearing him speak and teach, but I learn from him every single day. I think about my journey. My daughter just turned 18. She's about to go to college next year. And, or this year, I should say. And I think to myself, just 18 years ago, I was putting my daughter to bed hungry. I was putting my kids to bed hungry. And not only did I not think that it was possible, I also didn't think that I was possible. I thought that I was going to stay in this cycle of impossible land because I didn't have a college education. I didn't have any license or a degree. I didn't have, um, I was putting Jada and Maya to bed hungry and every other week I just felt like I wanted to die like, because I didn't have any answers. The truth of the matter is that once I made a decision to stop thinking small, specifically when it came to my story, everything changed. I went from being the single angry, pissed off, uh, mom to building a handful of multiple six-figure businesses and then on to a multiple seven-figure business. The reason why I'm excited about just kind of spending this time here with you inside of Ty's family is because I know what's possible when you make a decision. I know what's possible when you make a decision to decide and design tomorrow. I know what's possible when you just entertain the possibility of your story. Now, um, I don't have a ton of time here with you today, but I'm going to take a moment and just walk you through, like, how did I do it? How did I actually go from being the single mom, uh, angry and pissed off all the time to building a life today that I love? And what's true is that I still today don't have a college education. I still don't have any licenses or certifications. I'm still Black. I'm still a woman. And all of the same attributes were true. Regardless of where you think that you are, you are right now, I just want to remind you before we get started that you're enough. Not only are you enough now, but you've been enough. And to the person or people who make you feel like you're not enough, you really don't need them. Now, I'm going to tell you a couple of things that I wrote down um, that it was so true to me. Uh, it doesn't take money to make money. I think that's one of the most important things that Ty said to you, and I'm going to ask you to double down on that sentiment. It's literally, it's not about being the smartest. It's not about being the most present. It's not about having connections. It's not about any of those things. It's 100% about the decisions that you make and your willingness. I don't believe for a second that the world is divided by have and have nots. I kind of personally just believe that the world is divided by will and will nots. What are you willing to do? What are you really willing to do? Like, cause that's actually the most important question. Like, what are you willing to do? It's not about who you know. I was never in the right place at the right time. Ooh, I was never the lucky one. I didn't get to put anything on a credit card. I didn't have someone who just hooked me up. I didn't have any of those things. What I had is my willingness. I wasn't willing, I wasn't willing to not make the dream a reality. And for me back then, my dream, my only dream was to stop putting my kids to bed hungry. Over that time, that moment evolved. And I, I wake up every day and I say to myself, Tiffany Largy, what are you willing to do? Because I can have anything I want. Like I can get to whatever I can envision if I'm willing to do the work, if I'm willing. So as we walk forward, I want you to ask yourself, how willing are you? I'm going to ask you in the chat to join me really quickly. And I want you to be clear. I want us to make a commitment together before we get started that it's about my willingness. Your willingness goes first. Now, um, take a moment with me and, and, and I want you to visualize your goal. 
a couple of years ago, I said to myself, you know, is it possible? The truth of the matter is that I looked at, I, I owned a business and I looked at the world and I said, man, I have this, I, I have this feeling that I need to go and impact the world. I need to go and tell my story. I need to really and truly just become more than what I am. I, I owned a business and, um, but I was really insecure. I kept thinking to myself, who wants to hear me? Who wants to hear me? Who's interested in me? Is anybody interested in me? And I look back today and let me tell you why your story comes first. Because I looked into the market, I looked into what was there, I was getting ready to sell my business. And for those of you who are wondering, my business partners were Xerox Corporation and Hewlett Packard. I had a boring brick and mortar office and I had 15 employees and we were doing a couple million dollars. Now, when I said to myself, I'm going to go out into the world and teach what I know, I didn't really have a plan. I didn't even know that anyone would be willing to entertain me, but I knew that I had something that the world didn't have. So I want you to stay with me because we're going to go through number one really, really quickly. The reason why I want you to consider as you're building, as you're walking through this roadmap with Ty, and as you're thinking through, man, what's possible? What could I be tomorrow? How could I finish this year? What could next year look like? What could the next five years look like? I want you to kind of ask yourself really and truly, because we're both midway through this year. And as you think through what you wanted and what you set out, to make happen, I'm going to, I'm going to make it crystal clear as to why your story has to come first. Now your story comes first, uh, number one, because you're the only you. In a world where we're constantly looking to be unique, right? We're like, oh, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and get this vintage jacket. I'm going to go and shop at thrift stores. I'm going to order something online. I'm going to make it. And my, this, this unique watch is going to make me unique. And I'm going to have a different color lipstick. And I'm going to design a beautiful website. And all of those things, they're good. They're good. But guys, brothers and sisters, I want to make it crystal clear. The only thing that you actually have that makes you crazy unique is your story. That's it. In the world, in the history of this planet, there has never been another Tiffany Largy, and damn it, there will never be another Tiffany Largy. So when I think about walking out into the world, when I think about creating something, when I think about introducing myself, when I think about making a lasting impression, when I think about sitting down and writing, speaking, getting on stage, when I think about even things like building amazing relationships with people like Ty Cohen, if I try to lead with all of these other things first, he's already heard that before. The world has already heard that before. They've already met amazing people with dope lipstick, with green nails, with a watch that's colored, with someone who wears a chain from Miami that's like borderline hood. Like the world has already heard those things before, but what they've never heard before is my story. In the chat really quickly, I'm gonna ask you, to join me, the, uh, my story comes first. Baby, your story comes first. No, I'm not sharing any slides. There's no slides. I know this is gonna be so awkward. This is just a you and me kind of a thing. It's just a you and me, it's just a you and me and I'm gonna lean in and I'm gonna love you. And hopefully, and hopefully we do this. Because not only does your story come first, but the world's never heard it before. It's the only thing that the world has never heard before. To the person who's saying to themselves, you know what, I don't know if I really want to write this book. I don't know if anybody wants to hear my story. I don't know if anyone wants to hear my story like that. I'm going to tell you, man, I used to think that not only was I not even viable, I didn't even think I was possible. I was like, who the hell wants to hear anything from me? You know why? Because of reason number two. So reason number two, I managed everybody's insecurities. So way back then, I was constantly being told, you know, Tiffany, like, because it was me, Jada, Maya, and God, guys, like, I love those girls. Like, Jada, Maya are 18 months apart. I flipping love them. And I was obsessed with them, but I couldn't figure this shit out. I could not figure out how to feed them. Um, my husband, he was actually, my husband was nowhere to be found. He was just like, you know, all over, he was gone. And, um, Every person around me was like, Tiffany, why don't you go get a license? Why don't you go get a degree? Why don't you go and get these things? And I was like, 
And then if it wasn't them telling me to go get a license, a certification or a degree, like to go back to school, you know what else they were telling me? They were like, Tiffany, go get a man. You need to go get a husband. I was like, I need to go get another husband. That's how we got in this mess in the first place. Are you guys bugging? The truth of the matter is that every single time I listened to other people, what I heard was them telling me that I 100%, that I 100% wasn't enough. I wasn't enough at this moment. I wasn't enough where I was. I wasn't enough with what I had. And they painted this picture for me that over there, when I accomplish this thing, when I become this person, when I go over there, then I'm going to be enough. And I was like, well, damn it. Can't I just be enough right now? And you know, that was the moment that I made a decision. Let me tell you the kind of decisions and, and the, the rules that I put in place for myself. Number one, I think this is number one and number two. I actually don't have any more time to manage other people's insecurities. If you can relate to that, can you just put hashtag out of time? If you're like, well, shit, I am actually out of time. I am so sick and flipping tired of managing other people's insecurities. Because the truth of the matter is that the reason why I wasn't trying to do that shit, it wasn't because of me. It was because I was constantly listening to them telling me what they thought I should be and who I thought that, that, that I should be and how I should be and, and what degrees I should go get and how I should live my life. And then they were messing around and telling me how I should raise my children. That's a whole nother conversation. And we don't even have enough time for that. I have no whiskey with me. So we're just going to keep this here. The truth of the matter is that I legit no bullshit. I was like, people... So number one, I made this rule for myself and I'm asking you, I'm begging you, I'm not even asking you because I love Ty's family. I love Ty Cohen. And you know, I know how much he loves his community. And I, and I really want to give this to you because I don't, if we never get to share another moment on this planet, I need you to get this because this is the most important piece of this game. You don't have time to manage other people's insecurities. That is a rule. I don't have time. We don't have a time so much that we have, I have a whole shirt and my entire team wears this shirt every day because the truth is that it's like, once we let go of the ideology of what other people want us to be, we can just get back into what we need to be. We need to get back to our own focus. We need to get back to our own here. And I don't care if this is your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your children, your spouses, your multiple spouses, if you're that kind of person and it's okay, I'm still gonna love you, it's okay. But the truth of the matter is that I didn't have time to manage other people's insecurities. Number two. Um, so number two is vitally as important because this became a navigational piece for me. Because right when you get started, like right now, you're thinking to yourself, like you've heard from, you, you've walked through this journey with Ty and hopefully you're going to make a decision to walk deeper into what, what Ty's teaching. I mean, you, you have no idea. When I talk about like, not only does success leave clues, but one of your responsibilities is to make a decision to get as close to um, the how as possible, which is principle number two. So I started to ask whenever people would, would talk to me, I would listen to them and I had already had this, this, this rule, right? Like, well, I'm not managing your insecurities. So then I started asking myself this question and this is where you can start to navigate what's right in front of you and asking um, this question to yourself and to all the other people. Stay with me, fam. Stay with me. Ready? Does that person live the kind of life I want to live? It's like every time someone had an opinion for me, like uh, they had a serious opinion for me about my life, I would look at them, including my parents, and I would say, do you live the life that I want? Because as soon as I was like, well, no, damn it, you don't. I was like, well, shit, your opinion's irrelevant, period. Your opinion doesn't matter. Your opinion is off the, we're done. We can't even listen to you anymore. It's not, has nothing to do with whether or not they love you, whether or not they care about us. You can care all the most for me and steer me down the wrong path because you are not fighting for you. And damn it, you also don't live the life I wanna live, period. It's kind of like, you know, in our community, do the damn thing nation. I have this very simple principle that I, I, uh, I deliver to our audience all the time and, and it's simple. And I'm gonna give this to you because Ty and I both share this. Um, Ty and I share this. Uh, we don't ask broke people how to make money. Now, hear me out on this statement. So way back when, when I was starting, I, was, I started this, this journey of 
kind of going like this. Well, I can't get a college degree. I cannot get a license. I cannot get a certification. Jada and Maya's preschool was $2,2100 a month. My rent in Miami, Florida was $1,600. So I need $4,000 before I even thought about anything, let alone like, like food, diapers, because they're 18 months apart. So they were very little. And real talk, I would start like trying to hustle. And before I knew it, before I knew it, someone would creep up and say, oh, but Tiffany, you know, like you shouldn't be spending so much time doing that. Tiffany, you're doing that such and such wrong. This is how you should name this. This is what you should and shouldn't do. I don't like the way you're offering da, 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 da. And I'd be like, oh, and, and for a second, I would entertain them. But then one day I was like, wait a second, you can't help me. You're still working a job that you hate. Wait a second. You can't help me. You can barely pay your bill. Wait a second. It was like, oh, hold the flip on, damn it. And I was like, you know what? I can't listen to you people anymore. Not that you're not nice people and I love you so much. Mm -mm, I love you. I love you. But I was like, oh, my sweet Jesus. Oh, my sweet Jesus in heaven. I was like, I can't listen to none of you people anymore. You all going to steer my ass the wrong way. Uh-uh. I'm going to get to, I got to get to this finish line. Because if I don't get to, if I don't get to $5,000 a month, I'm going to drown. Like I'm going to emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and then physically drown. My kids and I are going to go back to being hungry. I don't have time to listen to you. And more importantly, you can no longer give me your opinions. And I have to actually sort them into the invalid. If that, if you resonated with me, if you heard me, can you just put the word money in the chat? Whenever we, whenever you hear something that lands for you and you're like, well, shit, that's where you put money in the chat. Okay. That's our rule here at do the damn thing. Money in the chat. The truth of the matter is that not only do you have a responsibility to yourself and whatever you came, whatever you decided to come to Kindle cash flow for like whatever you decided and you were like, you know what? I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to come and pay attention. Cause let me tell you, I applaud you. I already know that because you're here, you're a cut above the rest. I already know that you're my kind of a person. I already know that you're what we call in Miami about it because of the fact that you made a decision to be here bright and early, to be here plugged in and dialed in for the day and to not make excuses. And more importantly, you made a decision to tap into the best. And trust me when I say Ty is the best. Ty talks about me sharpening him, but I'll, I can tell you, there are so many times where I can look back in the last 12, 24 months of my life and decisions I've made at the level that I play in. And I'm like, man, I wouldn't have made it if it wasn't for having Ty in my corner. Now, it's not just having Ty in my corner. It's also by me watching Ty, by me being in proximity. So the third thing that I want to, I need to make sure, because it's like, yeah, you can get to 5,000, then you can get to 10 and you can get to 50 and then so on and so forth. But how did I actually build it? How did I get to a million dollars? How did I forget the million dollars? Let me push that shit. It's, that's actually not even important. What's really important is that I built a life that I stupidly love. I love my life because I get, my life has choices. The reason why you need the dollars, the reason why you have to sit down and do this thing is because money gives choices. For the person, for people who constantly told me, uh, you know what, like money doesn't equal happiness and all this other stuff. I was like, wait, what? You're crazy. Because money may not equal happiness for you, but I did not enjoy being broke. Is anyone else with me? Like, I didn't enjoy that at all. There was nothing fun about Tiffany Largie putting her kids to bed hungry. That's a truth moment. There were so many people who hated me. And I was like, yeah, well, the truth of the matter is that money doesn't, may not buy happiness, but I'll tell you, it bought a lot of my happy moments, period. End of subject. Being broke was not fun. One of the things that I love about Kindle Cash, well, one of the things I love about Ty, I think I saw someone here, is that Ty brings to the table his whole community. Um, his whole community, like I, like I had the luxury of, of hanging out with Ty and uh, Lenny, no, Lenny the boss, let me actually get myself together, a couple of weeks ago um, at Ty's house. And I was, you know, the truth of the matter is that being there with all of his people, I was reminded because you're right, for the person who wrote, Ty has heart and he has integrity, you are spot on. But the truth of the matter is that it brings me to step number three, it's community. Being in the right place is not about being in the right place at the right time. 
It's 100% about being in a place where you don't have to explain yourself. You don't have to make excuses. You don't have to manage other people's insecurities. They just get you. One of the things that I love about being in a community with Ty is that Ty just gets me. When I have this outlandish, this makes no sense to everybody else idea, I don't even spend any time talking to them about it. I, we, I talk to Ty and my peers. Right now, if you're not dialed into his community further, you want to be. And the reason why for me is because like you can sit on the outside for a long time and that's what I did. So my me managing other people's insecurities led me to believing stupid things like, uh, Tiffany, you can just work really, really hard and do it yourself. And it's like, yeah, I worked really hard and I did it myself, but I also lost a lot of time with my children. Um, I spent a lot of nights in tears. I wasted a lot of times trying to figure shit out on my own that I didn't need to because someone else already walked the path that I needed and wanted to walk. We only have like 80, 90 years in the game, in the life game. Why am I trying to waste it doing stuff that I don't want to do? And I say don't want to do, I didn't want to cry. I didn't want to spend the time going like this. I didn't want to not spend time with my children. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to spend time with my children, but because I come from a culture, anyone else have this? If you do, if you come from a background or culture or family um, that ro rolls like this, can you just put the word culture? Cause I don't know where everyone's from and I'm gonna ask in a moment. But, but the truth is that I come from a culture where it was like, no, you don't ask for help. You kind of <laughs> till forever. And you don't ask for help, especially if you're a woman because that's weakness. That's showing you're weak, you don't have strength, you're not enough. It just shows all these bad things. So I adopted that. All the time, I wish I had not done that. If there was one thing that you could, well, Tiffany, now that you've crossed this and, you know, what, what would you do differently? I promise you to sweet Jesus, it would have been like, I would never have tried to figure this all this out on my own. Jada's going to be 19 next year, people. You know how much time I lost? Yes, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the things that I have. I'm grateful for the life I get to live today, but I wish I had gotten there sooner. And I would have gotten there sooner if I had stopped and asked for help, if I had plugged myself in, plugged my thing in to a Thai's community, if I had just dialed into something more. I wish, which is why it's like, I, wanna, I want to push this simple statement, don't do it alone. Don't do it alone because the faster you get to whatever it is you want, the faster you start dreaming, the, the faster you get to dream out loud. And then you get to impact people. Like help is so good. It's so good. It's the best thing ever. But being like being in a place where it's promoted to ask for help because in those environments, I wasn't promote, I wasn't, I wasn't welcomed in asking for help. I wasn't high-fived for asking for help. I wasn't applauded for asking for help. I, I, I don't want you to make the same mistakes that I did. I don't want you to take as long. Let me tell you why. Because not only is your story important, but the world needs your story. Guys, like for real, for real, no bullshit. The, the world needs your story, but it didn't need it yesterday. It needs it now. It needs it every day. And it doesn't need your little bit of your story. It needs your whole story. Your good, your bad, and your ugly. Because your good and your bad, yes, it's comfortable. It has a little bit of uncomfortableness, but it's your ugly. It's your ugly that holds the shame. It's your all, all your ugly that holds the, the lessons. It's your ugly. It's your ugly that holds the shame and more importantly, the rejection, but it holds the lessons, guys. It holds the lessons. The world needs those lessons. Once you experience something, it becomes a fact. Once you experience something and it becomes a fact, guess what else happens? It, you become the expert. So last, you are already the expert. Once I experience something, I'm the expert. I don't need anyone else to validate it because it happened. Everybody get that. If you understood that, can you put the word money in the chat or expert in the chat, one of the two? 
Once I experience something, it becomes a fact. So because it becomes a fact, it is what it is. That means I don't need to justify. I don't need to explain myself. I don't need you to validate whether or not I'm the expert. And this is the urgency as to why you need to get your product, your item, your thing out into the world. That's why you need to take the next step with Ty. That's why you need to go in what we call do the damn thing, right? That's why you need to go such and such and such because you need to, um, like you need to do dot, 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 whatever it is that you've been like, I need to wait. I need to go take another class. I need whatever it might be. So man, oh man, oh man. When I tell you that I'm so excited about what you're going to build, like OMG, not only am I excited about what you're about to build, but I'm excited for you. I am so grateful that I have been allowed to come and spend this time with you. I'm so super excited. Thank you so much for having me. Dearest Ty Cohen, I'm grateful. Kindle Cashflow Community. Tiffany, this was awesome. We appreciate you. Do we, hey, Tech, can you bring us side by side? I wanna, I wanna actually be able to share the virtual stage with, with, uh, with Tiffany here. <sighs> Guys, what do you think? Right, let's give her a big thank you. Let's let her know how much we appreciate her. Tiffany is the truth. I call her Tiffany the truth. Tiff, you never heard me call you that, but that's what I call you, Tiffany the truth, all right? I appreciate everything that you bring to this. You know, you were talking about your story and the power of the story that you bring to the universe, folks. I want to ask you a question. And Tech, can you get me and Tiffany uh, together side by side? You Abigail? guys are. You we are. are. Okay. Yep. All right, cool. It's, all right, I'm in a uh, gallery view. So boom, there we are. Now I see you. I want to ask you, if you're watching right now, right? How many of you guys, and let's, let's, let's clear, Tiff, they're going nuts for you in the chat box. So take a look at the chat box. Look at the appreciation so right hard. there. I'm going right? to read them all. Yes. Look at, look at all of the love right there. Look at, I mean, like you really brought something to this thing and I appreciate you for bringing your perspective to it, right? For showing people that there is this, this notion of being able to do the damn thing, regardless of what anyone else thinks of us. Like it's all about us, regardless of whoever else doesn't think that we're capable, we have the ability to do it. I want to ask you guys something here, right? So, so leave the chat box for a second. Let's, let's let the chat box be, keep it still. Don't post anything else in the chat box for a second. I want to ask you a question. So I grew up in Father Panic Village, right? And I'm going to go back. I grew up, I was born with sickle cell anemia. I grew up in the Father Panic Village housing projects. And I was told that I would be dead by the age of 17. How many other people that are watching this right now were told the exact same thing? How many other people that are watching this right now grew up in Father Panic housing projects how many people that are watching this right now were born with sickle cell anemia? If you meet all three of those, put me into the chat box. All right? So no one, right? Not a single person that's watching this. That's my story. Like there's uniqueness in telling your story. But how many people can identify with some of the struggles, some of the things that I had to go through, even if it wasn't in the same way, right? You've had things in your life that you've had to deal with. Maybe it was an abusive husband or an abusive wife or lack of funds or, you know, being discriminated on or not knowing how to figure out some of the trainings. Like there was trainings and courses on top of courses that I couldn't figure out or not graduating or not making it past college or high school or having a, a child early or having a marriage blow up in your face or having a second marriage blow up in your face or having a car that broke down and it was like a life changing challenge to be able to get the repairs done on that thing. How many people have suffered some type of illness? Maybe you have a loved one that has, you know, something that's taking place with them right now or has taken place with them. How many people have had obstacles, have had challenges in their life? Every single person that's watching this, I guarantee you. And that's exactly why I wanted Tiff to come on, because your story is something that is unique to you. And if you are not using that, 
to number one, encourage and motivate and inspire other people. You may not have the exact same story as I do. I know for a fact you don't, but you can probably resonate with some of the things in my story, right? You can probably resonate with some of the things that Tiffany talked about, even if you didn't go through the exact same thing. Use your story. If you're an author, share your story with your readers. If you're outsourcing and you're thinking about your pen names and you're trying to come up with the backstory for your pen names, take from your story. Yes, that's exactly. I mean, there's so many different things that you can do. So Tiff, man, I love you for coming in and bringing that on and just sharing your light and your energy. And I'm, I'm looking at the comments. I'm like obsessive with when it comes to reading the comments when we have a guest on, because I want to know, do we bring this person back on and are they giving value to our community? And you hit like, boom, you're on like a 12 or 13, right? So you just went right past the meter and you totally did it. We appreciate you for that. We're going to continue to do the damn thing. We're going to continue. Make sure that the mantra, if it's to be, it's up to me, flows. And let's give Tiff a thank you. We know that you've got things to do, Tiff. Tiff is over on the West Coast, so I'm not going to hold you. Appreciate you. Look I... at that. She's even got the colorful nails going on right there. Look, your story. Bring your own story in, folks. Stop being afraid of being who you are. Stop being ashamed of being who you are. By not sharing your story, you leave so much on the table. And let me just say this. You might think, well, Tiffany, who's my story for? I want you to be clear. Regardless of where you've walked, I need your story. I need the lessons. My children need the lessons. I cannot find this stuff on a shelf. There is no other you. And if you don't share with me your story, who will? And if you allow someone else to, if you allow someone else to share your story, guess what? They're going to screw it up and get it all wrong. Bye, Sorry. guys. All right. We'll see you, Tiff. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Really cool. So, Len, what's next? What do we got going on? Are you there? Are you there? Are you here? I am here. I am right. here. I am here. My God. Listen, you know, if you thought that that was powerful, if you thought that that was impactful, man, let me get in the chat. You know, Tiffany, just, just put Tiffany down there, you know, because, you know, it is about your story and everyone should have one. I mean, that was so impactful, so powerful. Tiffany, you are the bomb. You will get one of these and you also going to get one, two, three. Boom! Awesome, 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 awesome. Hey, you know, make sure once again that everyone book their coaching calls, all right? Also, make sure that you are VIP because I'm still looking. I'm not sure we're going to do the money or we're going to do the laptops, all right? But right now, we are going to go on a 10-minute break, all right? I want everyone to get up. I want everyone to stretch, you know, feel good, feel awesome. I want everyone to fill their coffee cup up, all right? I want you to clear your head. I want you to silence out those phones. I want you to hit the bathroom. We want zero distractions when we come back because we have some amazing stuff for you, all right? Remember, we are on Eastern Standard Time, okay? We're going to come back at, let's see, uh, 3 15 p.m. All right. Once again, we will come back at 3 15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 10 minutes. But you know, you always come back five minutes early. So once again, stretch it out, hit the restroom, fill that coffee up, and come ready. All right. With that being said, see everybody in 10 minutes. Woo!